making pizza like this. It's such a fleeting thing, it's, it's so stressful. And you feel that moment where it's like, wow, but then it goes away, yeah. and then you want that moment again. It's like being a drug addict. And you're chasing it. Yeah, you're like, oh, that one time was so great. I'm gonna keep doing it next thing you know, you're a homeless, toothless heroin addict. <laughs> That's me with pizza. When I think about Anthony's pizza, it's this person that was like very in tune with what their vision was and their craft and like never really wavered. He makes this Neapolitan pizza that is the most simple and probably one of the most difficult pizzas to make. A lot of the existing network of pizza places stems from Anthony being here to begin with. He always wants to improve and it's something crazy that like he tells us that after 20 years every day he changes things. I started out with it being what I thought was like really Neapolitan pizza. You know, my family was originally from that part of Italy. That's what made me want to make pizza. But I mean, then at the end of the day, I guess it's just a pizza, my pizza, whatever it is. It's Neapolitan inspired, which I hate to say also. Or that crap now, neo Neapolitan. What the hell does that mean? A lot of the gluten structure is broken down over the fermentation process. It's not just like a quick process where it's hard to digest. It's not overly seasoned. Each element plays into another. The cheese is very tight and like chewy. You eat the whole pizza and then you're kind of like, I just ate an entire pizza, but you feel fine about it. The bakery I opened in Red Bank, New Jersey, probably 1993. I wanted to do pizza there, but I, at that point I knew I couldn't afford to open a pizzeria, so it was just bread and baked goods. I made focaccia and this and that. Then I closed that and opened up the pizzeria in Point Pleasant Beach in 96, and I named it Una Pizza Napolitana. It started with just margarita and marinara pizza. I charged $6 for each pizza, and we had sodas, and that was it. I had a customer order the pizza, take it to go, and then came back, and I wasn't that busy, so like I was like, uh-oh. And they came in, and the guy was like, he opened it, he's like, what is this? I'm like, it's pizza. He's like, what do you mean? This isn't pizza. I'm like, that's the way pizza's made in Naples. And he's like, that's not how they make it at Naples. Well, the thing is, he thought when I said it, that's how they make it in Naples, that I meant it was made at this pizzeria that was like a mile away in a strip mall called Naples Pizza. I was just like, this thing has gone as far as it can go here. Like, I want to show the world what this pizza is. And so I used to come up to New York a lot and eat and hang out. And I would always come up here and just be like, man, nobody up here is making pizza like this. It's insane. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it in New York, and I'm going to show the world, and then I'm going to get out. So I didn't live in New York when Anthony was making pizza here. I, I read about him like pretty fanatically when I lived in San Francisco. And then I heard he was coming to San Francisco, and I thought that was really amazing. When I moved to New York to open the place, I always had it in my head that I was not staying. Because I like the outdoors and I like nature and I like, you know, that kind of stuff is a big part of me. It was as busy as it could possibly be. I sold out every night of the week. I was out of my mind, I was consumed. If I wanted to never come back, I should have left here when I was earlier. Because I stayed here so long that by the time I moved to California, your character and who you are is so in you that like I got there and I was like, it's not me. The obvious choice was like, we need to go back to New York. Anthony never, at his restaurants, never served a salad. Like, he never served a dessert. He just had like wine and beer and pizza and sparkling water and espresso. And I was like, if you were to go that route, I think that Jeremiah and Fabian would be great people to work with because they definitely make great food. Um, they definitely are tapped into the New York food scene. I don't think that they'll screw you over. You know, like they seem like they're pretty honest guys. Have you used these ones? Yeah, yeah, I have, and they're, they're really incredible. It's a very special taste. And these particular ones are only grown on the slopes of Vesuvio, which is super volcanic. Jeremiah and Fabian are, you know, they're like the kind of like the darlings of the New York like wine and food scene right now. They have two restaurants in the Lower East Side. One is called Contra, which is like their fancy, like small plates, like tasting menu. It's very democratized. I mean, for, for New York, the, the prices they're charging are very, very low, which is really cool. Wild Air, their like wine bar next door. You know, it was just, there's just an approachability to what they do. So Jeremiah, he was, he always talked about um, Anthony's pizza. 
And then Anthony was doing a pop-up at Mission Chinese. I mean, Danny Bowen from Mission really kind of like glued the, the relationship because I just went to go eat and he goes, go say hi to Anthony. And I was like, oh, I don't want to bother him. He's like, no, like, you should go say hi. And so I just kind of like said, hey, you know, like I'm a big fan. Like if you ever want to move back to New York, we should just like talk and I gave him a card. I didn't really think he was going to call. And then the next day he was like, would you consider opening a, a pizza place with this guy? And yeah, just we met and really got along and, and the idea started to form from there. Today, Anthony came in and he wanted to experience some of our fresh dairies that we make. And one of the things was burrata. And this is what we do seven days a week, every day. It just oozes out. And it's the sweetest taste you could ever have. Thank you. Incredible. Jeremiah used to be a customer a while back. He was just a person that loved food. How would you think we're gonna use this? Um, I think we're thinking to use it as one of the small plates. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, not on the pizza, but we have an antipasti there so we're working on. Can I have a piece of that? We don't eat today. Do we, we eat today? I had a piece of banana cream pie. There's so many pizzerias, but there's not the best pizzerias all the time. And I think he's gonna bring it to a different level. I wanted it to be una pizza, but I wanted some kind of evolution to it. I wanted some kind of growth. I wanted some kind of further stimulation around me. We wanted a place that felt like we could really focus on the balance between the wine, the pizza, the desserts, and the antipasti, and have everything talk to each other. Where we're at now is like just the final touches, details, hanging up pictures, kind of bringing it tight into like more of a place that actually has a personality. This is really a continuation. It seems like there's a lot of differences, but all those differences are almost superficial in a way. From a food stand standpoint, like he'll be doing the pizza, I'll probably be working on all the savory stuff, Fabian will be doing the pastry, Giuseppe is gonna help make sure that everything comes together. I love it with the fresh strawberries. Yeah, it's good. It gave it that texture, yeah. that little texture that we needed. We just want to really have everybody in the place that works here really understand, like, you know, what the three of us are about. And we want them to be excited about what they're serving and believe in it and, like, have a passion for it. And then hopefully that translates at the table. The actual ingredients in the dough, if anyone's like, oh, is there like oil in the dough because I can't eat oil or whatever, like the dough is just flour, water, Sicilian sea salt, and that's it. It's never refrigerated and it's naturally leavened. Those are like the two key things. The real thing to know is like that the pizza is always an evolution. I used to say to people years ago, they're like, they would always be like, oh, the water in New York is why like bread is good, why pizza is good, why bagels are good, all this stuff. And I'd always be like, that's not true. Like there's so many components to the dough. There's, and also I always said to people, you're using commercial yeast. So you're not really using the water as a catalyst for anything. But since I've been back, I started to feel like there actually is something in the New York water. I haven't been hand mixing for, you know, nine years or 10 years. I still hand mixed once or twice a month to kind of think that it was still something important to keep as a skill, but I grew to love the actual dough that I can make from a mixer. I used a spiral mostly for the last couple of years, and so now this is, this is called a diving arm. The few people that I know that make pizza and stuff, like, like this, you know, they, they quickly realize that that's why um, you can keep doing it and not get bored. Because it's one of the few things I think in cooking where like if you're making it naturally leavened or it's not refrigerated or any of this stuff and plus the wood oven, you're just dealing with so many dynamics that change every day and not only every day but even throughout the service time. So like even last night when we started making pizza at six, by 10, the dough had evolved into something else because it's not refrigerated. So it's raising throughout the time that we're open. And then the oven's getting hotter and different. So you're just, it's like this stress, I think, and this constant challenge, even though it's the same thing every day, that keeps uh, people like super interested in this. And I kept thinking about how perfectionist he is with making pizzas, and, and that really makes us think about 
a lot of things. Considering I don't know what the hell I'm doing and I'm still trying to tweak it, the pizzas are on their way to be better than they've ever been. I, I mean, I would say like 70% of them are where, where I would like them to be around that point. No, but I mean, anyway, within that 70, I'm still not saying they're what I would like them to be, but I'm happy enough that people can eat them. He's like most chefs, you know, like, when we have, like, 100,000 things going right for us, we focus on the one thing that's going wrong. Like, visually, I know when I take one out, visually, when I see it a certain way, I'm just like, that's what I was going for. Every single pizza is different. Like, if you, if you took, like, 10 of them and lined them up in a row and looked at them all, Every one of them has their own personality and their own life and their own points that are beautiful, their own points that aren't. Like, it's like humans. <laughs> They're my babies. If you come and eat this pizza, you're, you're getting the best of me. It's not that this is the best or I'm better than somebody else or they're better than me or anything. It's like, it's almost like, it's just me you're getting. You know, and hopefully some people like that. You know, <laughs> he was on his on a mission to to create like the pizza that he felt was missing and that he really wanted to be proud of. And I think he's done that, and he continues to make it better. But you know, we wanted to kind of add a couple things, but you know, it's in line with what the way he thinks. Across the board with everything, it's like this kind of like you know, not aggressive, not stuck in tradition, not anything. It's about what the three of us can give to the public as like what we believe is the very best of us. So anyway, I'll make two more pizzas for you guys. Did you guys like the pizza? What's your thoughts on the pizza? I've never had it, can I try it? <laughs>